Hello, uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Rajesh Kumar. Uh, he is uh, faculty in uh, the Department of Humanities uh, here at uh, IIT Madras. Uh, and we are going to discuss uh, research in humanities and different aspects of uh, research in humanities uh, uh, so that uh, if you are aspiring student in this field, uh, it will give you some sense of uh, what uh, to look forward to when you get into this field. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Kumar uh, uh, has a PhD in linguistics from the University of Illinois uh, in Urbana-Champaign uh, in the United States and uh, he works in the areas of uh, language and education, uh, social linguistics, uh, linguistic theory and uh, language and cognition. So uh, he is eminently equipped uh, to discuss uh, these issues uh, in, in the context of research in the humanities and so uh, with that brief introduction. Uh, we will start with uh, discussing this uh, uh, topic with Dr. Rajesh Kumar. So, uh, tell us, uh, what are uh, traditional areas of research in uh, humanities? See, the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences in any IIT is, has a unique feature, which is its interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary nature. So, in this department at IIT Madras, we have uh, traditional areas like economics, literature, linguistics, philosophy, history, and sociology and its several other branches which are as new emerging areas and also what has been added recently is the development studies. Apart from that, the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences has three more areas which has been added and they are like China studies. Uh, European studies, that is European Union study and also um, there is a center called uh, Indo-German Center for Sustainability study. So most of the most of the traditional areas in that you find in any domain of humanities and social sciences are covered as a research area in the department. Okay, and uh, so uh, do most of the students joining your department tend to uh, go towards these uh, you know, traditional areas of research or is it more towards the uh, more recent areas that you have opened? In, in the recent times, uh, there because of the multidisciplinary nature of humanities and social sciences in general, uh, you, you have lot of new emerging areas. For example, uh, in the history one of, it, it's not really new but uh, one of the new areas that can be counted is history of science. Um, in the development studies, the intersections with this, with the ideals like politics and gender, and uh, sociology of religion. Uh, in in the field of linguistics as well, uh, we have language and technology. Uh, the 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 use of computers in teaching methods. So there are. There are all kinds of new areas emerging as well. In the in the traditional area of literature, when you divide it into several several parts, we cover American literature, African literature, English literature, uh, uh, Indian literature, Indian writing in English, and all of these are uh, these are new emerging areas that are covered in uh, humanities and social sciences. And most of the students in the recent years who come they already have one of one or these uh, one or the other of these areas in their mind okay. so they do not come for a broad area of studying english or english literature only uh, and even within that uh, specific domain of let us say african literature or uh, american literature they they have certain specified ideas as well and, and if not, over a period of time, those areas emerge in the discussion with the, their respective faculty, where they go to the specific area in depth. Okay. And actually, since you mentioned uh, interdisciplinary uh, areas of uh, research, mm -hmm. and also the fact that you know many uh, engineering uh, uh, institutions, including right. the IITs, have a humanities department. Right. Uh, what exactly, uh, and since we are being viewed by a general audience, mm -hmm. what exactly do you feel are the boundaries of humanities? Where, where, I mean, what are the set of topics that you feel encompass, uh, you know, the range of things that people working in humanities focus on, as opposed to any other? Right. In, in, in fact, there is, when it comes to humanities and so, social sciences, and all, all, not almost all, all IITs have this department. And I can speak about the humanities department here. 
there is there is no limit in fact and uh, we see the, the research ranging in health policy technology uh, ethics religion um, and and these these areas do find a space in existing area, areas okay. as well so mm. there there is no no, no limit okay. no okay. no uh, boundary that restricts us in fact locating this humanities and humanities and social science department in him in iit gives it it some kind of expansion where it is easy to transcend to technological domains and they faculty and students both researchers can um, can can venture out into areas where they get data readily available for for example someone wants to look at uh, the use of technology in health okay you can easily find someone working in this area in computer science mm-hmm. uh, biotechnology or electrical engineering uh, where uh, you see the applications of uh, applications of technology from these areas and then social scientists do make a research question based on that what's the impact of these things in assessment of health okay. or for that matter what how how does uh, uh, for, for example how does uh, the entire sector of health does any kind of ethical practice or not okay mm-hmm. so beginning from the technology to ethics to practices locating in an iit instead of restricting it from anything else opens actually up more opens up possibilities. more possibilities okay. so uh, now if you look at it from a student perspective mm-hmm. some students who uh, come to join a humanities department and maybe a humanities department in an iit uh, what do you think are major challenges that they may face uh, or they t- tend to face when they join such a department are there such challenges something uniquely there for them that they should uh, be aware of right there there is one specific thing uh, uh, which becomes a technical challenge that is it's a it it's not a department of a particular discipline for example if someone wants to come to study linguistics there are limited number of people in in terms of faculty doing research in linguistics and unlike any other discipline linguistics or history or philosophy or or economics there are huge disciplines there are several sub sub areas in that so the students have to come prepared to be interacting with a limited number of faculty and staff in okay. this specific area and then for for example linguistics has four more core areas like syntax which deals with sentences morphology which deals with words phonology which deals with uh, sounds and then socio linguistics that deals with uh, language and society one person can have limited expertise in all four of them that becomes general linguistics but if you want to talk to a specialist in phonology or computational linguistics or uh, uh, let's say uh, morphology then you have to seek help from outside okay and that is one of the one of the things i would under, i would imagine uh, applies to all other disciplines that are part of humanities and social sciences in a department like this okay where you do not have a department of sociology separately where people study all aspects of sociology or a department of linguistics separately where people study all aspects of most of the aspects of uh, aspects of linguistics that's one of the limitations that students face and in terms of uh, research materials also we there was a time when people faced such problems but now with the emergence of uh, electronic uh, help available in materials being available electronically that is no more a, no more a problem no but uh, it again uh, to to go back to the strength part of this uh, take the example of my own discipline linguistics it's like a virtual discipline uh, it may not have a department of it may not look like a department of linguistics but there it's a virtual department in the sense that uh, i know at least four five other colleagues working in four di- different departments on several aspects of linguistics. linguistics so on one side when you don't get to talk to or meet with the specialist on daily basis on the other side you have a specialist at your disposal locally where you can talk to people with uh, uh, with specialities in emerging areas of emerging areas. Uh, linguistics okay. so it has a combination of uh, 
limitations and uh, advantages in being located in okay. uh, so, NIIT yeah. and technological institution. So, uh, even in general, I mean, yeah. uh, when you associate uh, both in IITs and even outside, anywhere else where, uh, say, humanities departments right. are there, um, I mean, I think there's a lot of recognition about the value of humanities in life and right. in, in general, uh, you know, s social sense. Uh, where do you see its utility in, say, with respect to industry? Where, uh, I mean, to what degree do you see industry interested in people with the humanities background? What sort of backgrounds are they interested in? And how do uh, are people, uh, students graduating with a humanities degree, where do they see value in, uh, in, in you know, where do they fit in? Very, very interesting. See, uh, one of the things that I use in most of the courses that I teach, and it applies to all disciplines and all areas of uh, humanities and social sciences, uh, what we try to prepare students with is most of the things that you learn in humanities and social sciences either at undergraduate level or at a graduate program are going to be more useful when you go outside the boundaries of IIT or any academic institution for that matter. Uh, this is not to un underestimate the value of any other discipline, but when you get the disciplinary expertise in electrical engineering or, a mechani or mechanical engineering, you demonstrate your learning and skills of those disciplines only among the peers and in a very restricted environment where you are supposed to be competing with the other electrical engineers and mechanical engineers. Whatever expertise you deal, you, you gain out of the courses in humanities and social sciences is going to be useful everywhere. That, that's one broad thing with, which I wanted to say about that. Now, being specific to uh, what kind of uh, contributions can humanities and social science graduates with all kinds of expertise in these disciplines make uh, which are useful for industry? That's also numerous. I mean, you can simply simply count. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the example of one of the things that, that I am doing on one of the projects that I am I'm working on. Uh, most of the industries require a cordial relationship with the society in which they are going to be establishing okay. their yeah. thing, uh, their, immediate, their community. immediate community. So they need to, you know the complex nature of our country in terms of its multiculturalism and multilingualism. Uh, they need to be in association with the local, local people. So to, in order to understand the society, language, uh, politics, uh, uh, cultural practices and everything, every industry requires a social scientist to, to help them navigate through these. I am not sure yet uh, uh, how industries are hiring people on uh, keeping these issues in mind or not. But you see the value but that they, they have, it, they have the need for it and they have definitely, to recognize it. Not only the need, it is time that they cannot ignore it any further. And we see we a see lot of conflicts emerging in our socio-political situations in, this, in our country with local local issues and industry. They are all located in these domains and if they apply the findings of uh, research in humanities and social sciences and they have people equipped with these these things, then probably they will reduce such difficulties. Okay, so that is a very, yes, I think, a very valuable yes. insight. I think a lot of uh, industries and people from industries who are, uh, I mean, maybe looking at this kind of information absolutely would, uh, possibly find that very uh, useful Ab to uh, absolutely. apply. So maybe, okay, some uh, mundane question let mm -hmm. me ask you. So we have... Uh, uh, in humanities, I think the kind of work you do is very different from, say, what an engineering uh, uh, activity is. Right. Where maybe I think uh, there is a much more uh, controlled experiment that we do. Uh, I am sure some, some analogous thing may be there in humanities. Right. Uh, so, what do you see as, you know, the uh, amount of interaction that must exist between, say, students coming in and the faculty that they are working with, how often you feel they need to meet them uh, to, you know, optimally learn something and at the same time do something new. Uh, how much do you see of this interaction being necessary to what, uh, how important it is, how often should it happen? True. See, uh, as you rightly said, there are some areas in humanities and social science also where we need controlled environment for research. But in general and in, in linguistics and in my area in particular, this is again one of the things that I metaphorically use, that the laboratory for research on language begins where all laboratories end. That is, the whole world is a laboratory for that. Okay. For that. Now, uh, so so that that's the domain. That's the that's the domain that you have to cover in your research 
in humanities and social sciences given a particular area. How often should the interactions be, which is not very different from any other discipline? Okay. Uh, I would say, based on my own experiment, experience in research, with uh, when I was doing my own research with my supervisor, or when I do research now with students, I I think uh, a meaningful discussion of an hour in a week is sufficient and required. Uh, if that meaningful discussion takes place, one hour of material takes place, three or four hours, it depends on individual student and the faculty. But a meaningful, contentful discussion uh, where you evaluate what has been done, what has, what has to be done next and where we are today uh, requires one hour. One hour. One hour Perfect. a week. Okay. And then uh, on, with, with total honesty, the research scholar has to translate that discussion into reality and function and work uh, in their own own work. Okay, okay. And whenever uh, they decide the agenda for the next meeting, the ideal and optimal goal for any research scholar to be successful in this and to be disciplined in research is to come up prepared with at least, I mean they have to give it an effort to, to be prepared with at least 75% of what they discussed, they are the going to be discussing yeah, yeah. in the next next okay. meeting. Okay. So that kind of discipline in terms of uh, meeting is required uh, in humanities and social sciences, in particular. And I'm sure it's yeah, required yeah. for think all other disciplines will be there for as other, well. I mean. Also, uh, when students graduate from your department, see when we talk of uh, MS degree or a PhD degree, mm -hmm. these are always treated as uh, degrees where somebody has specialized in something very True. specific. Uh, and so there is always this uh, uh, feeling amongst people who uh, complete, uh, uh, you know, uh, undergraduate kind of degrees before they pick up uh, or enroll for a PhD or an MS degree. There is always this concern that, you know, later uh, people may look, us at, look at us and say we are specialists and uh, uh, there is not an easy fit for us in a position somewhere. Uh, where do you see most of your uh, MS uh, master students or PhD students, uh, students who complete uh, these degrees, where do you see them, uh, you know, uh, joining for positions uh, that are, you know, uh, professional positions uh, in locations? Uh, most of the master's students in this department go for uh, their PhDs in higher studies okay. at different places. We have a five years integrated program where students come after their 12th grade. They spend substantial five years chunk of their life here and they learn something and then they, they must go for some, for, if they are interested in higher studies to some other institutions to see uh, and verify what they have learned here is, is meaningful. In terms of uh, uh, what they choose to do, uh, for master's students we see mostly going to uh, higher studies. Some of them go to government civil services jobs. Uh, some, of some of them preferably join non-government organizations to, uh, to, to learn more about the specific areas Take for example, somebody is specialized in some issues in development studies like gender equality or sustainability studies or like uh, uh, resource management and uh, water resource management or healthcare management and all that. So they, they do find uh, uh, jobs in these areas and there are a lot of unconventional areas which were not available. Uh, let's say 10 or 15 years ago are coming up with for hiring of these people. I, I just interacted last week with two of them who are working in the area which I never thought in for a, where, where a student with humanities degree will be working. They are working in marketing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we were discussing a minute ago, certain industries and in particular upcoming industries uh, who are kind of a startups are realizing the role of uh, expertise in humanities and social sciences in the areas of uh, marketing, in the areas of, uh, in the in all kinds of area where you need human interactions. Okay. And uh, PhD students also have, uh, some of them have joined uh, uh, postdoctoral programs and some of them have joined uh, teaching and research programs at various educational institutions. So these are, these are some are the of the areas, areas where we find them working. Okay. 
Great. So, I think we will uh, close with this uh, question here, yeah. uh, which is uh, what advice would you give to an aspiring student uh, who would like to join uh, graduate studies in humanities? Yeah, very, uh, uh, very significant question. This is uh, we, we face and particularly students face these questions. The, see, research in any discipline uh, requires certain kind of discipline. So, they should be committed to their discipline, uh, to, to, to their academic discipline in a disciplined fashion. Okay. That, that's one. Second is, they should be, they should be, it's a, it's a full-time job. It's a 24-hour job. Full-time activity. Yeah. Full-time activity. And you should, what you are doing, you, it, it should reflect as your interest. It should not be a burden for you. The moment it starts burden means you are losing your interest. So to keep up your interest in this discipline, in any discipline of your choice, you should enjoy doing, you should enjoy doing that. If you don't enjoy doing that, then that's one of the parameters when you have to realize that you have to find something else okay. to do. Third, and very significant, there, there are a lot of things, but a third that I would add from my personal experience is uh, you should be, you should just, you should be reading something more than your own discipline as well, so that you are aware of what's happening around you and in other disciplines. So, a, a research program in any discipline at any academic institution, I'm, I'm making it more general, it must give you a holistic development. And at the end of it, if you say, I have, gra I have done my research in mathematics and I only, that, that also in mathematics, I have done it in al algebra and I only understand this much. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make you look too good. So, as a mathematician or as an engineer and as a social scientist, you are aware, if you are aware of the fundamentals of other things, you are aware of fundamentals of what's happening around and uh, what's coming up in literature, uh, that keeps you alive. And, and in turn, it has huge implication. We can, we can discuss this at length at, in, in some other, at some other time. But what you read outside your own discipline has huge implication for reading and development in your discipline as well. Yeah, I think it opens up a lot it of new ideas, of new, new ideas. Uh, thought processes. Yes. Which and you and the least it does, it, it gives you the habit of reading. Yes, of course. So, these are at least three things that people should be prepared for when they take up research in humanities and social sciences in particular and in any other discipline in general okay. that I would think. Okay, great. That's, those are nice uh, words to know and nice thoughts to uh, keep in yeah. mind. Uh, uh, so, I, I would like to thank you uh, for uh, joining us and uh, you know giving us this insight into humanities, uh, which I think a lot of uh, students across the country uh, consider I mean, at, as an option that they should look at. And uh, for certainly for, you know, for a higher research uh, in these areas, uh, it's nice to have an expert tell us uh, uh, what is it that they would like to, I mean, they are likely to experience. And so, I thank you for that. Thank you thank so you much. Sir. Thank you.